Hello and welcome back to the latest Liverpool Echo Blood Red podcast where Ian Doyle and Richard Garner are both alongside myself, Matt Addison. We'll be previewing the Merseyside derby across the course of the next half an hour or so, discussing Jurgen Klopp's press conference and looking at the latest injury news and possible team selections as the countdown to Monday night is on. Dodie, I'll come to you first. Obviously, Everton we saw last week with new manager Sean Dyche, they beat the league leaders. Liverpool, by contrast, haven't particularly looked like beating anyone for quite some time now. It's a, a strange sort of feeling going into this game. Are you looking forward to it? Is it an opportunity for Liverpool to reset? How do you sort of assess it at this point? It's a derby, so no, I'm not looking forward to it. Nobody looks forward to a derby. Anybody who's ever been to a derby knows you never look forward to it. Everton never looked forward to it because they've got a terrible record of over the last 10, 15 years. And Liverpool don't look forward to it because... They've had a decent record, and at one day it's gonna it's gonna end. And you know what that means in terms of you know the uh, bragging rights across the city, as they say, you know this parochial spat and all other cliches that we use for these kind of games. So now Liverpool particularly won't be looking forward to it because two reasons: one, they're not very good at the moment, and uh, the second one is that Sean Dyche is now obviously in charge of uh, in charge of Everton. And while Burnley's record at home against Liverpool was never particularly brilliant, Liverpool normally got a good result there. And field, you know, Burnley got a couple of good, good results. They got a draw there, a couple of draws there, I think. And they certainly they won there as well, didn't they? When there was nobody there. Well, there was someone was there. We, we, we weren't there. I think I can't remember. It was a penalty, wasn't it? At the end, yeah. Ashley Barnes, wasn't it? And that, that was the end of the unbeaten run at home as well. So that was, what, two years ago now? Just over two years ago. So... Yeah, I mean, the dice thing just adds another element to a derby. Um, as you say, Everton, well, we've been through the Wolves game already on the podcast earlier this week. Liverpool were terrible, They're certainly for the first 15 minutes. And when you go 2-0 down away from home after the first 15 minutes, you're probably normally not going to get a victory. Um, and they just left themselves too much to do again. So I know Jurgen Klopp was speaking in the press conference. He mentioned that they, you know, we knew that they'd given them two days off at the start of the week. You know, they can't train every single day. And the fact that they're playing on Monday, haven't played on Saturday, it's a long break. And, uh, it, you know, it gave them that time, uh, well, partly to, you know, recharge and have a bit of a rest, but also to reflect on matters because he also mentioned about they were in on Sunday doing a normal recovery session. And then they had an analysis um, uh, meeting where they went through things during the game before they did train, maybe after, but I think it's before. Um, and yeah, routine between the lines of what Klopp said in his press conference. Um, the fact that he says I was quite happy, you know, it made sense that we didn't see each other for two days suggests that they, uh, some words were, you know, shared in that particular exchange, that meeting. So I'm sure that uh, we'll, if he said that he's seen a reaction already from his players on the training ground, where they play, you know, the training with greater intensity kind of helps that some players are back. You know, Jot is back, obviously. He trained one day last week. Trade a couple of days this week already, and Klopp said that he could be in, in contention, certainly for a place on the bench against Everton if he uh, comes through the next couple of days training as well. Arthur Mello was there. You know, I'm surprised the players recognised him. That's unfair, obviously. You've obviously seen him all the time. There's been his rehab, but certainly the supporters were uh, certainly uh, not for surprise, but you know the fact that he's still there was a, a welcome reminder that Liverpool do actually have a, a few more midfielders from which they can choose. So. It'll be interesting to see what happened. It wasn't all great news. I mean, obviously, Thiago's picked up a, a knock, although I believe that that's one that it's one of those ones that he has to manage. So while he is a doubt for Monday, he could he, he could play. But that's one we have to wait and see. The thing without a Friday press conference or a Monday game is there's still another two days for, for players to get injured or, or, or become uninjured. So yeah, he, he, it's tough for the team news when, he's, when, you're, when you're speaking about a game so early. But yeah, looking at Everton. Are they the favourites? I'll ask you. I'd, I'd say Everton are. I'd say Everton are probably favourites, partly because I don't think, unless you've been watching Liverpool recently, paying full attention. I don't think people realise just how bad they are in terms of. It's so easy to beat them. So easy. I know we're going to Wolves in the second half. They did all right, and even though even the Wolves manager said, "Look, they should have got certainly got at least one goal in that period of twenty minutes, twenty five minutes before Wolves scored the third goal," and I know that. Klopp got in a bit of grief, didn't he, where he said he doesn't count the third goal. Well, he doesn't count it in the sense of his team because, you know, the way things work, you know, it's they were 2 nil down, they had to go for it, and the third goal was one of the counts, and you always leave yourself open for that. I mean, how many times did Liverpool score a goal like that in the you know the earlier years under Klopp where they were very good on the counter-attack? So, yeah, I think it wasn't as bad as the Brighton game, but they still lost 3-0 against a team that started the game in the relegation zone. 
and a team that they'd beaten one nil about two two and a half weeks earlier. So at the same ground, so it's not great. Um, the fact that Klopp gave them them two days and they obviously gave them time to shoe over it was. It may end up being one of these things where we look back at the end of the season and go, that was a turning point. But the only way it can be a turning point is if Liverpool start getting some good results and that starts on Monday against Everton. A game that nobody's looking forward to. No, I agree. No one is looking forward to. I do think there has been one or two when Liverpool were at the peak that I was looking forward to, but not at the moment, certainly. But uh, in answer to your question, actually, in terms of, of the favourites, I'll, I'll put that to you as well, Rich. But I think for me, if it was at Goodison, yes, I would agree. At Anfield, I'm not quite so sure. What do you reckon, Rich? Well, you've stolen my thunder there, Matt, to be honest with you, because that's exactly what I was about to say. I think if this game wasn't at Anfield, I'd be in total agreement um, that there would be a, a particularly high chance of Liverpool losing the game. And, and I still think that's possible at Anfield, uh, but it does give it a slightly different dynamic. A lot of these... Um, turgid performances and results have, have come away from home uh, and that gives uh, a little bit of hope and we do need some sort of hope don't we um that uh, Liverpool are gonna sort of address some of the issues that they've been grappling with recently and, and put in uh, some sort of good performance or some sort of performance that people can take something out of uh, at Anfield on Monday against Everton and you know the two sort of plus points really are one it is at home and two, the game's on Monday, so it can't ruin your weekend. Uh, and, and they're the main uh, pluses I'm taking out of it because what Ian's saying is absolutely true, isn't it? Liverpool have been absolutely horrendous uh, for weeks now. They are they appear easy to play against. Um, they they yeah, the, you could argue the performance against Wolves wasn't as bad as the three nil at Brighton, but what they have proved with that is they can lose three nil in more than one way. Um, which is slightly alarming as well, uh, and that that needs to be addressed. And if if Klopp saying it's good they didn't see each other for two days, then that suggests that he's uh, plugged the hair dryer in and, and give it a good blast around the room. And I'm not really surprised to be honest, because I, I thought the uh, performance levels against Wolves um, were unacceptable. Yeah, for, for all the, the, the injuries and, and the other factors this season, that is certainly the case, isn't it? The, the players who are there should be doing it a lot better. But, Lord, you mentioned a couple of players coming back potentially for, for this one. Diogo Jota, obviously, is the, the kind of biggest one, the, the most likely to, to play a part, I would imagine, probably off the bench rather than from the start on Monday night. But I suppose just having someone like him for an attack that hasn't really scored many goals this season, uh, well, certainly since the, the turn of, of the year. That that in itself will be a boost, even if actually Diogo Jota has been on a bit of a goal drought himself before he got injured. It's uh, it, it can only be a good thing to have the extra option. We can't really count the games he's played this season. I think he started four and came off the bench four times. And while well, he hasn't scored, I think he had five assists. Admittedly, three of them came in about six minutes against Rangers. They're all for Salah, but they still count. Um, so... <clears throat> It's been difficult for him this season because he's just not been fit or certainly not match fit. And then he had that spell at the end of last season. I mean, I've written something this week about Liverpool. Everybody knows that they've just been conceding the first goal for it must be about I mean, it's now about nine or ten months in the league that they've conceded the first goal an awful lot of times. But in that time, Jota's not played in most of the games, and he's the player who famously last season scored the opening goal in, in, in so many games. And he was what I call him the game breaker. So if you've got your, your player who scores the first goal and you know, he gets the, you know, gives the team the momentum and he scored quite a few equalizers as well, such an important player in that sense. And he's not there. Then that is going to impact the team, especially when they are crying out for, 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 okay. So I know Salah can do it and he's shown it in the past that he can do it, but the more players you've got who can score the all important first goal, the better. Because it's a lot easier to score the third and the fourth goal in a three or four nil win. It's a lot harder to score that first goal. And I think that's something that Liverpool have missed. And I think that's what comes from having, I know they got Nunes, who's a, who's a striker, a dedicated striker. And they had someone like Mane who could do that. Jota's, Jota, he's one of those Jota the slaughter. That's why he's called that. You know, that's where he gets these kind of goals. So they have missed that. I was actually talking to somebody just before, actually, at the press conference. And we were talking about, can you imagine if you went off after Liverpool played the Champions League final and you walked off and he says, oh, Liverpool are playing uh, Wolves next February and they're going to get beat 3-0. And you'd be like, sorry? He says, well, what's the team? And you go, right, well, it's it's Gomez and Matip at centre-back. And then you go, oh, where's Van Dijk and Canate? 
you go, well, they're injured. So, okay. So it's okay then because Fabinho and Henderson can, like, no, they're not playing either. Because why not? So one of them's healed, but he's been not very good anyway. And the other one's played about a thousand games and he's absolutely knackered. He says, all right, who have you got playing in midfield? Vaz Ketic, and quite a lot of fans would have said, who? Right? And then you've got uh, Cater, who a lot of fans would say, what, is he still at the club? And it's like, yeah. And then up front, it's like, okay, well, who's there? Firmino, no, okay, okay. What about Diaz? No, he's not there. Says, what about Jota? He's not there. Salah's there, yeah. He says, who else? Nunes and Gakpo. And a lot of fans would go, who's Gakpo? So, you know, this that's only, what, last May? And so the team, I know it's nothing new saying this, but that team is gone now. It's gone. It's gone and it's never coming back. That's it. And I think the last couple of weeks has been really difficult for the for the club and it's and also it's been very difficult for the team, the difficult for the supporters, certainly the ones who've you know turned up and travelled long distances to watch them and, and you know put in a couple of terrible performances. Um see, Brentford, Brentford was bad. And that was only like five weeks ago. So and that, that was kind of the start of the run. And even Leicester at home when they won two one, they were poor then as well. So this isn't anything new. So the team's gone. So now you are looking at a new team and it's you need players who are going to help them through to that stage, the transition, because it is a transition now. And Jot is one of them because he's somebody who can link the old team to the new team because he's got he's only what 26, isn't he? So he'll be back and he'll be somebody who'll be playing a big part. He got offered it, he got signed a new contract at the start of the season. He's one of the players that they want to help build certainly the not so much the team, but the squad around. They see somebody who's been a long term future there. And he is somebody who will soon be entering the prime of his career. And Liverpool don't have a lot of players at the moment who are in that kind of you know age range between we've said this before between 26, 27 to about 30. I think Robertson's one, Fabinho's one, but he's played I think somebody was saying he's played like on average more games than maybe a 33, 34 year old would have played in their career. So he's 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 tired as well. It's not just Henderson, you know, Paul Joyce at the time wrote a story this week looking at um, how how many games players have played since the start of last season regard the World Cups. It's not just Liverpool that struggle. Look at City. City have had a lot of injuries. Chelsea. Chelsea and Liverpool played exactly the same amount of games last season. And they're the two teams that have had more injuries than anybody else. And of course, with Chelsea, when they get a player injured, they go off and sign 13 players in their place. They're always mostly forwards. Obviously, Liverpool can't do that. In fact, to be fair, most teams can't do that. You know, Chelsea, will, will, we've spoken before, we'll wait and see what happens in terms of any you know, comeback on what they're doing with the 31-year contracts and whatnot. But Enson played 91 games over over you know over uh, since the start of last season, and he's 32. Make no one is a bit tired. And again, you have conversations with people. Well, in the old days, they were playing against they played 65 games a season. Yeah, but they were playing against other teams that had players who were playing that. Liverpool are playing against players who haven't played that many games. And that's why someone like Arsenal are able to take advantage of what's happened at Liverpool and City. And, to, you know, they're miles away at the top of the table. And if they don't win the league, I've said this before, that reckon for this position, they should probably disband as a club. So they've taken advantage. Liverpool, the problem for Liverpool is the, it's the perfect storm whereby they've got a team that's come to the end of its natural cycle. They're trying to replace them. And that's at the time when all the younger players and the new signings, Canati, Diaz, Ramsey, you could say, Nunes is, is, is still acclimatising. I'm sure somebody else has been injured. They've all got injured. So they're having to rely on the older players who they don't necessarily want to. Then they've all got injured as well. So, you know, you can, I know people will say these are just excuses. Well, it's, it's not, is it? It's reasons. If there were reasons last season why Liverpool did really well in the second half of the season, part of it is because nobody got injured and they had everybody available and they had players who knew the system and they'd been there for years. This time around, they've got quite a few players who haven't been there for a long time, still learning the system, and they've got lots of injuries. It's, 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 you know, it's not rocket science. That's why they're not doing as well as they could be doing. But they should still be doing better than they are doing now. And I think that's clearly what Klopp has put across on that Sunday after the Wolves game. And we'll, as I said before, we'll see on on Monday. That, you know, the derby is normally a very good opportunity for not, not even just the players. I think the fans. I think they've think as though, right, Liverpool have hardly played any games at Anfield since they came back from the World Cup. I, th I think um, 17, the, the 17 games after it, 11 are away. I think if they played at home, Wolves, um, Leicester, Chelsea, and they, they played Brighton away probably 15 times in, in that time, it feels like it anyway. And Wolves, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I do think that Everton, under the lights, Monday night, Derby, while no one's looking forward to it, I think 
once the game starts, it's completely different. And I do think it'll be a very good atmosphere. And I think it's it could be the start. The clock will hope it's the start of of his next, you know, iteration of this Liverpool team. Yeah, you'd like to think that that sort of, of game and hopefully that kind of atmosphere that they'll be at Anfield could be a little bit of a, an instigator for a bit more fight and a bit more battle from this Liverpool team. I'm sure that wouldn't go amiss. And sort of along those lines, Rich, we talk about the, the midfield. Obviously, at the end of, of Jurgen Klopp's press conference, Thiago, as Doidi said, potentially could be a doubt for, for Monday. Jordan Henderson has not been in the side recently. Is he one that you'd look to, to bring back in? Of course, we'll come to our, our full team selections very shortly. But this was was always a game, really, that I had my eye on him potentially being brought back into the team for. Most definitely. And I don't think it would have really depended on whether Thiago uh, was fit or not, to be honest. I think he would have been getting put into that midfield in some capacity. If it wasn't him, it would be James Milner. One thing I've noticed over the last, well, shall we say, since the turn of the year in particular, um, is that Liverpool had a lot of injuries, obviously, and, and are in this, I, don't want to, well, I suppose it is a transitional stage of, of, of sorts, but um, they appear to be lacking personality and leadership for me at the moment, and, and certain players who take responsibility, and all of those things, regardless of his age or how many games, um, he's played in the last year you'd associate with Jordan Henderson and also James Milner who's probably played more this season um, than he, he would have expected to but of course he keeps keeps getting relied on one because he's normally fit and two because um, Jurgen Klopp relies on him um, so whether Thiago would have started this game you'd expect him to start against uh, ahead of Navi Keita, I suppose but I have to say I wasn't impressed with Thiago against Wolves particularly on that third goal I just felt like um, it was a prime example of where Liverpool seemed to be going wrong in terms of in terms of their application and the, and, and the desire to win a football match. Um, and, you know, Thiago is technically one of the best players in the side. But again, I just just don't see what he's what he's given Liverpool at the moment in terms of of creating goals and 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 stopping them going in at the other end. So it's it all it all looks good when you got an all singing, all dancing Liverpool side that's um sweeping everything before them, but we, we couldn't be any further from that at the moment. And I feel like we need a, a few more uh dogged midfielders in there who are just gonna get stuck in and, and get a grip of a game and 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 just not be passive. And that I just feel that's how it's been for a few weeks now. Um, so yeah, Henderson definitely in for me. Um, and I have been critical of Henderson at points this season. I understood why he wasn't in the side earlier, and I've probably probably flip flopped on it a little bit, really, because I was one who definitely wanted to see younger players in that midfield because because I could see Liverpool getting overran by you know fairly av you know relatively average teams overrunning Liverpool's midfield, and so all for, I was all for new faces in there, but. The changes haven't really worked, and now we're in a a, a sort of a, a a crisis of confidence. And in those situations, I think you really do need your experienced players in there to be able to try and get a grip of the situation. I'd like to just jump jump, jump in and in defence of Thiago there. Um, I do actually think that he's been one, perhaps less so against Wolves in the last game, but he's been one who has taken on extra responsibility. He's been one who's been trying to get stuck in. I think there was a. There was a, an incident towards half time, the game of Wolves, where he managed to deck two Wolves players in the same same passage of play, and they both left them on the floor. He was like, "What? What's up with that?" And I think, you know, he's not the biggest, but I think he has, you know, it's probably been a, a, to the detriment of his normal game. He's felt yeah. the need to like go around and start putting in tackles, and I know it was a little bit like that when he started, where he went to ground a bit too easily. It's not quite the same. I think he's just felt the need as one of the older players in, in the midfield to to set some kind of example. And I think some some people, not you, Rich, but I think some people think he shouldn't be doing that, you know, and it's like he should be sticking to what he's good at. Well, he is allowed to do some other stuff and, you know, it's not just on him. And I don't think he's ever really been a player, certainly at Liverpool, who's created loads of goals or scored loads of goals, but he's someone who's been able to move opposing defences around. And, I mean, the reality is, look at last season, he was integral with them nearly winning four trophies. So, there are some people who'll say, oh, well, he didn't play in the League Cup final. Well, that wasn't his fault. You know, and he, and he, okay, he got a slight injury before the Champions League final as well. But then, 
you know, if, if he'd been fully fit, would Liverpool have had a, been a different outcome against Real Madrid? You know, these are, you know, you don't know. It's all hypothetical. But no, I think Thiago. I do think he, he he's been better. He's been one of the better midfielders. And it's. But having said that, you're correct about the personalities, and that's to do with the players who are missing. Firmino's got a massive personality. Van Dijk, can absolutely Van Dijk, can out. It's centre back. I think Matip and Gomez are both. You know, let's face it, they're both playing for Liverpool and they both won the league and they played in the Champions League final. So they're both both more than good enough, but they're definitely better when they're alongside somebody who's a bit more of a leader. And, you know, Robertson's had a bit of a go. Uh, he was, interestingly, that he was the captain the last couple of games. They missed Milner for his on field, you know, as, as, as Rich said, for his on field presence. Will he get some minutes against Everton? We'll get to that in a bit. You know, so there are those kind of players. And Jota's one of them. And Diaz, in a, in a different way, is one of them as well. And of course, Mane was one. So you well, suddenly you got rid of loads, you know, loads of them are not there with the personalities that are needed. And Baj Ketic, or by oh, come on, Matt, you know how to pronounce it. I always get Bacic, it wrong. Bacetic. Ba- is that what it is now? What is it? Sorry. That's no I, clear. Believe, I believe it's Bacetic. Yes, okay. I believe. So, so Stefan in midfield, he, uh, <laughs> he, 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 he it's the old cliche, you know, I've been doing this job for a very long time, and when a team plays absolutely terrible and there's a youngster playing, you always say, oh, well, at least he run around and put in a bit of, but <laughs> against Wolves, he was more than that. He actually had a, he actually, in the second half, when Liverpool were pressing Wolves back, he was key to that. He had a, he had, he had a decent game, and it's interesting that I speak to some people and they're like, oh, he's absolutely amazing, and this, that, and the other, and I'm like, well, hang on, he's only, he's only started four games, but if you add it to what you've seen from his playing at the academy and those kind of games, and people have been saying this is a guy who's going to make it, he can. They moved him into defensive midfield after not a very long amount of time from centre back because he thought that would be his best position. That turns out to be the case, but you can't put too much on his shoulders at, at, at this this age, which is why I think Thiago's taken it upon himself to to you know do other things in his game that perhaps he's, they aren't what he's best at. And it's led to some people saying, well, he's why is he there? Well, I, I do think that's a bit unfair. He, uh, sorry, mate, go on. I was just going to say, he's obviously seen enough in Bajatic, um in order to put him in ahead of Fabinho. Though obviously Fabinho hasn't been playing well, but he's got very high stock within that Liverpool squad. Um, and would, in times gone by, including the start of this season, would have been one of the first names on the team sheet. So to be able to make a big call like that and take out a player and replace him with an 18-year-old obviously does demonstrate that he has a hell of a lot of faith in him. Uh, and just on your other point, um, because we didn't really when we talk about personalities, he just touched on him there about Jota. He, he is again uh someone w- with a huge personality. I think he's like horrible to mark, isn't he? He's just like a real bit of a narc up front there and 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 probably enjoys getting under the skin of defenders and I just haven't seen enough of that from from Liverpool at the moment who've looked a little bit like lost sheep up front at times I, I feel and hopefully when he gets back in there I don't, I don't expect him to start but if, if he if he gets on and, and maybe in a couple of games time he will be starting I, I'd like to see a show a little bit more uh, a bit more uh, nastiness up front. Yeah, I think it can help with with both of them, can't it? Just uh, onto it, it, purely in terms of, of the numbers, I think Thiago and, and Henderson and all of those say, players look better. Go, going back to oh, Stefan, <clears throat> the other thing, so I'm still can't I'm not pronouncing his name correctly. Um, the the, the, the Spanish Serbian, he um, the how old's he? 18, isn't he? The 18 year old, the midfielder. Yeah, all of these things that we write. The former Celta Vigo star. Already, what? Yeah, <laughs> nobody really expected the Spanish Serbian. Yeah, yeah, the academy <laughs> graduate. Um, <laughs> I think he's been around the squad since July when they went on tour. So he knows the way that they play. And obviously he's played a couple of games here and there. So it's not quite they've just thrown somebody in who's completely inexperienced. He's experienced in a different way away from the actual games itself. So he knows the way that Liverpool need to play and he knows what's expected of him. But obviously the complication on top of that is that when he, when he was first there, I don't think he expected to have Thiago and Cater in front of him or Gomez and Matic behind him. In the same way that Gomez and Matip probably didn't expect him to be in front of them. So there's quite a lot that's going on. It's not just down to one player. But as I said before, we've seen this with this happens with all teams all the time. Every single team has this issue and they get through it or they don't get through it. And at the moment, Liverpool are not getting through it, even though they should be with the players that they've got. And I think that's what that, you know, the chat on Sunday was probably about. And don't repeat, don't repeat myself, but it's 
looks as though this is I'm going to have to be the start of something else. And you know, Liverpool fans know all about false dawns, but this is slightly different. This is just let's have a dawn. Yeah, they will come back. They will come back eventually. Hopefully, it can uh, can start on Monday. We'll uh, we'll come to a couple more topics that I wanted to to come on to actually during the the team selector. So we might as well get started with that. We'll talk about the the defence and a couple of injuries in that position. But uh, let's go through and, and pick our teams then just to, to finish. Doyle, I'll, I'll start with you. Obviously, we know Allison will be in goal at the back four. You mentioned Milner before. That's an interesting one. The centre backs interesting as well. I know there's been a couple of suggestions in certain places about possibly bringing in a Phillips or, or even a Fabinho at centre back. What are you going to do with your back four? Well, I'm not having Fabinho at centre back. No chance. I mean, I can understand where people are coming from. It can help build his confidence to a degree. He doesn't have to go running around, and it's a set position. But what I'm saying straight away concedes a goal. It's like, oh god, brilliant, you know. But I do think. The two calls are who's going to play right back because Trent obviously hasn't had the best of times. Only the last couple of games. I think he's another one who, when they came back from the World Cup, I actually thought he was one of Liverpool's better players. Certainly in terms he's of his good attitude. Against Leicester, wasn't he? Yeah. Certainly in terms of his attitude. And funny enough, that's the one thing that got questioned when he got subbed against Brighton. He wasn't too happy. But then when a player's ever happy when they get subbed, players should never be happy when they get subbed. You know, unless they've had an absolute nightmare and you know, they beat them up against the players completely, you know, exposed them and they're just quite glad to get off. But then they're unhappy for another reason. I don't think that was the case with Trent. I just think he wanted to be on. Uh, Miller did well when he came on, but that was the Brighton game and they played. Miller didn't get on it. And did he get on against Wolves? I was there. I should know this. I don't think he did, did he? No. I think so. Yeah. so you have to weigh up the fact that Liverpool have got an awful lot of the ball. So if it had been at Goodison, you'd be thinking, well, maybe Miller, but I think Trent will play right back. Robertson left back. Centre backs are definitely having that Phillips in. Definitely having him in. I don't care whether anyone's injured or not. I do think on merit, I don't I think either Matip or Gomez could get dropped because they're just nowhere near good enough at the moment. Maybe that's something that they need. And going back to personalities, Nat Phillips, is he the greatest player Liverpool on Liverpool's books? No. Because if he was, he would be playing all the time. But he's got one of the best attitudes. Every single time he's come in, he's never let them down. He gets on with it. He's, he's just it's just the way that he, he there's a reason why he's still there apart from the fact that every time he's about to leave the center back gets injured there's a reason why he's still at liverpool and if he's there they may as well use him liverpool have been struggling at set pieces struggling with dealing with balls early and they haven't as we mentioned before had a leader at center back phillips is a leader in a different way and he's certainly good at heading the ball and clearing it we've seen that when he was in the team the second half of the 2021 season and everton are gonna look to utilize set pieces we know what sean dice does as a manager he's got the winner against arsenal from a corner that's when he got a lot of the joy against against arsenal so phillips plays then you're looking at who would you have alongside him and there's a very strong case to drop them both you know and play no one else there but <laughs> but yeah but you uh i'd probably say gomez purely because he's the quicker of him and Matip and Phillips, if he's if he's got one fault, it's well, it's not a fault, but a shortcoming, is that he's not the quickest. So I do think Gomez, Phillips, Robertson, and Alexander Arnold. Interesting. I am going to stick with Gomez and Matip because I think that one of them is going to have to come into some sort of form over the next few weeks. There's some big games. I'd be I'd be a little bit worried if if Nat Phillips was in, for example, in the Champions League or maybe Newcastle away and that sort of thing. I, I do think they've got to stick with them just to just to sort of play them into some sort of, of form. Do you, do you want to come back in on that or should I go across to, to Rich? Um, no, I think I've, I've said what we what needs to be said. Um, I probably wouldn't have a problem with Phillips playing at Newcastle either, to be honest, although it all depends on in this team that probably won't get picked anyway how he does against Everton. <laughs> Rich, which way are you going to go? Um, I've crossed a few names out on this sheet since we started and put a few back in and um, I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm chronically indecisive on this. Um, Doyle has sort of sold Phillips to me quite well there, to be honest with you. Uh, and I do, I do like Nat Phillips. I just... What... What... What kind of nags me is the fact that he could have left last month and now we're talking about him starting the game that's how quickly things have changed in football um but you know Matip and Gomez should be performing far better than they are you know what I mean they these are genuine contenders to play alongside Virgil van Dijk every week uh as starting plays in the team and and yet if 
Van Dijk and Canate were fit, they'd both be on the bench, wouldn't they? I think that is off based on the uh, recent uh, dire performances. Um, but I'm, if see the other thing is, we'll find we'll find out a little bit more about this later. Uh, at the time of this podcast being recorded, Sean Dyche hasn't yet done his press conference, and we're not quite sure on the situation with uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin. I've got a feeling he's not going to play, but uh, he obviously he's had a scan this week. If he was playing, I'd be more inclined to have Phillips in there to try try and deal with that threat. And if if he's not there, um, they're not quite as potent in that area. I don't think. That said, I do think they are still going to try and get balls in from wide areas, aren't they? Whether they've got Calvert Lewin or not, and that probably enough just to tip me into uh, putting Phillips in and. There's not much to choose between the other two, but I, I, I would probably leave Gomez out uh, purely because I'm just more of a fan of Matip than Gomez overall, to be honest with you. But that's that's one issue taken care of. I've got Andy Rabo at left back. I'll stick with that. Uh, I'm looking for characters in this side and I'm trying to find a spot for James Milner because I think he has a role to play in this game. Um, and if it's not in midfield, it's at right back. And... I, I think he will definitely play and I think he may start and I think he may start at right back. So I'm not, not I wouldn't say I'm totally easy with that. I, in a normal circumstance, Everton at home, you'd want Trent on, um, you know, whipping balls in from that side and, and, and scoring goals. But I'm just so desperate to get some sort of um, authority back in this Liverpool team that I feel like he needs to play. So I'll, I'm going to go with... Uh, Another change, Liverpool back four, yet again, uh, of Milner, Matic, Phillips and Robertson. It's interesting you mentioned there the, the Calvert-Lewin thing and, and Phillips in terms of the aerial thing. I was thinking of it the other way around, that if Calvert-Lewin did play, I'd be a little bit more worried about that threat in behind, the, the pace and the ball over the top. But I suppose you could, could argue it both ways, couldn't you? But uh, let's move on to the midfield then, Doily. We've spoken a, a little bit around Henderson and a couple of, of these players. Which three players are you going to go for from that position? Well, he's going to have to play one of Fabinho and Henderson, so he'll probably play Henderson, given the fact that Fabinho's... I mean, we'll come back to him at another podcast. Um, I think the problem you got with that is that you got question marks over Thiago, and Cater's kind of dropped off a little bit. I thought he did all right when he first came into the team. So if you're playing Henderson, where are you playing him? Because if you're playing Stefan, where's he playing? So you see what I mean? So you've got... And then you've got the third midfielder who there's an awful lot of players to choose from let's just assume that, that Thiago doesn't make it if Thiago makes it he plays so if Thiago if Thiago's fit I think it'll be Thiago Henderson and Stefan if he isn't fit then there's an interesting call to make because while I could Milner yeah I can understand why you want to get Milner in the team but if you've got Milner and you've got Henderson midfield it's not exactly the most mobile purely on age right although you wouldn't expect both the pair of them to last the full 90 minutes one of them maybe right so so Milner might be someone who comes off the bench for about half an hour at the end then you've got someone like Curtis Jones who loves playing in this game he's got a winner in the past and he he, he spoke well, there were some quotes over the over the week saying that you know it's, it's funny how his, his targets were at the start of the season was like yeah play some games and score some goals need more goals and now it's like I'd just like to be fit and just so, so I can get a few minutes in so I think the time's come, given that how the midfield has not been functioning properly. If Thiago's not fit, I said it the other week that he should be playing, but he's left-footed. He'd have to be on the left-hand side. So you've got two youngsters then in Stefan and Curtis alongside Jordan Henderson. And I'm, you know what? I'm probably going to go for that. Let's be, let's be perfectly honest. Anything's going to be better than what's been going on recently. So a bit of legs and a bit of, you know... With, with Curtis Jones, he's obviously a local lad who will be quite keen to make an impression. So, And if it doesn't work, there's five subs. Just sub him. Yeah, I think there's there's a good case for that. I think Henderson and, and Stefan Bajetic definitely is, is two. And then probably I would go maybe Naby Keita on the, the left in place of, of Thiago. But uh, which way are you going to go, Rich? Um, yeah, I've kind of gone that way, although I'm not actually sold on it. Which kind of kind of is a good indicator of where we're at at the moment with Liverpool, but um, yeah, Basic has been doing pretty well given given the role that's been thrusted 
upon him the responsibility so I can see him continuing. Henderson, you know, we've already covered off, is coming back in on the right. And, and um, I can see the argument for Curtis Jones, just just concerned of maybe not seeing enough from him. But, you know, I'm, no, I'm not really a big fan of Naby Keita anyway, but I, I appear to have selected him anyway. I just, you know, when... He came with so much promise, Keita, didn't he? And he just hasn't delivered it. So maybe he'd like to do that on Monday just as a way of apology. It's so, his birthday today. Come on. Be nice it's to him. birthday today. Yeah. Is it? It's birthday today. Yep. How 28 today. Oh, 28. 28. 28. I wish I was 28. Um, yeah, there we go. Finished his 28. Let's, well, th- these headlines write themselves, don't they? Birthday boy Cater has a great weekend. Nets winner in Derby with shot on target from outside the box. He's in. Bajatic, Henderson, Cater. Good stuff. Right. Attack, Dory. Uh, Salah, Nunes, and Elliot. Let's just get to the point there. Elliot deserves to be back in the team. Bit unlucky to get. Uh, Rested, should we say, against uh, against Wolves. Gakpo, feel sorry for him. Coming to a team that's not very good. Uh, don't agree necessarily with what Ronald Koeman said. And obviously, Van Nistelrooy's quotes this week were completely made up. So well done to whoever did that. Um, that's assuming the Koeman ones were actually said then. I mean, somebody must be going around just pretending to be, you know, Dutchman and talking about Liverpool players and Everton as well. Um, and. Yeah, I think Salah, I almost, I can't remember, I maybe even said that he shouldn't have played last week, but, you know, I, I, I may just keep him in, just keep him in. And Nunes definitely needs to stay in because stuff still happens. He's definitely going to start scoring some goals again. And I think th- that's the best three at the moment, Liverpool have got up front. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. And then that would leave you with Jota, Gakpo and potentially Firmino as well to, to come off the bench. Rich, is that the same for, for you or slightly different? No, it's the same. Um, yeah, Salah's not really doing much, but you've got to play him because he's a really good footballer who scores goals and we could really do with one of them right now. Uh, Nuno's down the middle. I just think he offers far more of a threat than than, than Gakpo has. And, and Harvey Elliott, although I did raise a few eyebrows at him playing that position, um, a couple of weeks back when he got moved there, <clears throat> I thought he, he repaid the faith uh, against Brighton and was very unfortunate not to uh, retain his position for the, for the following match. So, and, and although I've, uh, I said earlier in the season with Elliot, I thought he had a great personality, was, was was trying really hard, was putting the effort in, but just just didn't seem to be able to 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 be producing too much when he was playing in midfield. He has at least got the uh, the attitude, the application, uh, and the personality to uh, pick Liverpool up in this current slump. So um, not just for his efforts in that position, but for his personality as well. I'm happy to see him in there um, with with Jota lurking on the bench, ready to uh, come on and make a difference. Just on that, uh, what uh, Doyle was saying as well about Jota, about um, how he can often get the first goal in games. I've not looked at it, but uh, maybe the um, basis of a future piece. I'd be interested to know how many first goals Nunes has actually scored. Because um, obviously we have talking about he's scored nine or ten goals for Liverpool. Um, but I don't know how many of them were, were the first goal or, you know, key, key ones in matches. I'd be interested to see that. And certainly uh, I think we'd all be happy if you could deliver the goods with that on Monday. Yeah, for, for him and for Salah, could do with a, a goal and for Liverpool could definitely do with a first goal. And with that in mind, we'll go to uh, our, our match predictions then for, for Monday night. Dory, I'll come to you first. What do you reckon the score might be against Everton? Um, Nunes, I think he's got the first goal once against West Ham when he scored the winner. In terms of the game, he got yeah. Liverpool's first goal against Fulham when they drew. Yeah. Um, just have a look through this. He didn't score first against City, or he, could, he got the first goal against Arsenal when they got beat, but, but that was for Liverpool. Um, so Already behind at that point, though. Yeah, so it was an equaliser. Yeah. Um, I think that he got a couple against um, against Southampton, but Firmino had already scored. So, oh yeah, the game. Right. Let's be honest. It's probably going to be terrible. Um, I, I enjoyed. Uh, by the way, last time we were on ahead of the Chelsea game, Rich said it'd be nil-nil and awful, and it absolutely was. 
all the coldest <laughs> I've been at a football game in a long time. It's absolutely freezing. I'm um, just going to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the famous derby score of one all. Yes, I was very tempted to go with that. I am going to go 1-0 to Liverpool, but I think it will be incredibly scrappy and it will not be uh, not be the best watch. But, uh, Rich, what do you reckon? Um, well, I, I have to say 1-1 as well. To be honest with you, it's it's difficult to... Um, you know, we could really do a win though, couldn't they? You know what I mean? If I, I mentioned, The only thing that gives me hope of a win now is it sounds like... Uh, Klopp has got uh, quite annoyed with his players, and hopefully that will uh, will produce some sort of a reaction. Um, but until I've seen concrete evidence of that, I'll stick with one one. Yes, I'm hoping that the returns of Diogo Jota and one or two others can help Liverpool, but we shall see. We'll have all of the build-up, of course, in all of the usual places. The first Blood Red podcast of next week will, of course, be on Tuesday because of the match being on Monday. But don't worry, there's loads of other stuff to get stuck into before then as well. For now, though, we'll leave it there. Thanks to Ian and to Rich for joining me. and We'll catch you next time here on the Blood Red channel.